one of the biggest problems young filmmakers make, and even professional filmmakers for that matter, is one way or another, every one of us loses our footage once in a blue moon. It does happen. It's a reality. I'm doing this video early on so you can all prevent it and not make the mistake I've made and I've seen other filmmakers make. So today we're gonna to be talking about what happens when you shoot your footage, how to protect that footage so you don't lose it, and learn from the mistakes that I've made and the rest of our team has made. This is a very common problem, so let's talk about it. Let's fix the problem so none of you have to deal with it. So when we shoot a project, in this case, we're shooting on the Canon 5D SR, and we film it on a CF card. Now, if you have an SD card, CF card, or you're shooting on the red, your cards are gonna be different. But the same process, as far as backing up that footage, is 95% of the time gonna be the same process. So after I get done shooting this video in 10 minutes or so, I'll literally take the card out of the camera, I dropped the card. That's the number two thing you don't wanna do. So I'm gonna explain this process with what we're shooting right now to make it as practical as possible. So after I get done for the day, or in this case, after I get done with this tutorial video, I will take out the card. I'm shooting on a CF card right now. If you're shooting on an SD card, micro SD card, or red card, the process would be the exact same. I pull the card out of the camera, and then I would get a card reader for that card. I use a Transcend card reader, but there's a lot of different ones out there. You can buy them on Amazon. I usually just go for the ones that have the highest reviews. I will then take this, and I have USB 3 right now, and when I, when I looked up different card readers, I made sure I found one that was super fast, that could read the card super fast. The faster your card can be read, you can transfer the data faster. So that's actually a thing when you're looking at memory cards to be aware of. So after we get done filming, I'll take the card, put it in a card reader, and then I will take it to my laptop if I'm on location. Most of the times we're on location and we're usually doing this process after we get done filming, we get back to the hotel, pull out my computer, or someone else on the team will pull out their computer. And in this case, since we're editing 6K footage so often, I have a fully upgraded MacBook Pro. Now that comes at a very expensive price, around $4,000. But it's fully upgraded and it allows me to edit on Adobe Premiere, which is the editing software that I use personally and actually the rest of our team. That's what I use so I don't have to wait for it to constantly be rendering and lagging. This handles it really well. There's another computer I use as well, an Asus computer that's highly upgraded. It doesn't cost as much. I do prefer Apple products just because they're simple to use and what I've been kind of used to since I went to film school. Originally I was a PC guy. I switched over to Mac once I went to film school because kind of all the filmmakers were using Apple computers at the time and I love it. I stick with it. So I'll pull out my computer just like this and I will hook this in and I'm pretty sure you guys know how to hook up a USB. So once we hook this into my computer, now my MacBook Pro, it actually has two USB ports. So I'll put this into my computer and then I will put an external drive into my computer. And I actually have them color coded. So in case you're wondering why it's pink, it's color coded for different reasons, which I'll explain in a moment. So this is also USB 3, very fast. Um, it's a Western digital drive. This is actually a three terabyte drive. I don't like having high terabyte drives when I'm traveling on location in case something weird happens, this gets dropped or you're traveling and it kind of gets shaken. If you're gonna lose footage, I'd rather lose two terabytes of footage over three terabytes, but I thought I'd just kind of give these a try. But generally speaking, I'm taking two terabyte hard drives, Western Digital, external drives. I bought all of these drives on Amazon. Just for the record, I'll have a link below in the description. But I will literally create a folder in here called the project. So in this case, I'd call this tutorial workflow. And then I would throw all the footage on here onto this drive into that folder that I've created for that project. Now we're shooting video as far as our main channel goes every week, if not more. So we'll create a project file based on what we're shooting. So good example, a couple weeks ago we shot a video called Paintball. Warfare, which we haven't released yet. When we shot that video, I came home, I created a folder called Paintball Warfare 2.0 because we'd actually done another paintball video in the past. And from there, I created another folder that said red footage, 
and I actually just called it red. And then I had another folder called GoPro and all the GoPro footage I put in there. And then I had another folder called behind the scenes footage where I put BTS and put all that footage there. So that way I can just jump on the hard drive, click the project that I know it's going to be, and then I can select red footage, GoPro footage, or behind the scene footage. So I just have it as easy accessible as possible. So once I transfer this footage onto this hard drive, I then eject this hard drive, put it away, and then I'll pull out another hard drive, and I will back this footage up again, calling my project files exact same that I called it on here, and I will throw these onto this drive. Now the reason I normally don't put this video footage directly onto this, just in case something weird happened on this transfer from here to here, I know I at least have one more shot at it as far as getting it right, going from the original footage where it all started. So in this case, blue is my main hard drive, and then the pink drive is my backup hard drive. So I know if something happens to this drive, I at least have it backed up on this drive. Now this is super important, and I cannot stress enough how important this is. When I was starting out as an early filmmaker on YouTube, everything was zero dollar budget, I had no money to make movies, and I had to put my, I felt like I had to put my life savings into the hard drives, and they were costing about that time 150 $200, so that's a lot as a beginner filmmaker to put in hard drives when you're not seeing a payoff from the actual hard drive itself. So the problem is with that though, is you need to have two hard drives. Even if you can't afford it, you're gonna have a lot bigger problems if you lose that hard drive and you lose everything that you worked so hard to capture. So always have a backup. I cannot stress it enough, if you don't have the money, to get a backup, figure out a way to make it happen because you're gonna regret it big time if something weird happens to one of the drives. I've seen that with a lot of beginner filmmakers and I've seen that with a lot of professional friends within the film world as far as things going bad. So let's talk about things that go bad with these hard drives. Now the way hard drives work, in case you're not familiar with it, as far as these drives that I'm talking about right now, they actually have a disc that spins in there and essentially it has a needle or something like a needle that actually imprints onto the disc. So there's actually spinning instruments in here. So when you're plugging this in, those things are spinning around in your drive. If you drop that drive while that thing is spinning in there, the consider it like kind of like a record player. If that falls or drops while it's still spinning, there's a much higher chance of scratching the drive internally and ruining all your footage. So I've seen that happen. Has it happened to us three times that I can remember where the drive has been dropped or something weird has happened? Two of those times we had a backup. One of the times, sadly, we did not have a backup and it was not a good thing. We won't talk about that. That's another story for another day. Now, what happened the times that these did go wrong is someone went to go grab one and he dropped it on accident and hit the ground. Another time, one of our editors was editing in the car. He had his hard drive plugged in to his laptop and he had this stuck in the door handle. Someone went to open the door handle of the car and then this popped right out, flung, hit the ground, hard drive, instantly busted. As far as it didn't look busted, but it was not working and there was no way we could replace it. So it was not an ideal circumstance. So that's my own experience with hard drives failing. Another one, when I first started the whole YouTube scene, they didn't have drives this small. So I was actually using this drive right here. This is once again a Western Digital drive as well. It's a two terabyte hard drive. The same amount of, actually this is a three terabyte hard drive, but they make them the same size, this small. But this has more footage than this hard drive right here. Now the problem with this hard drive, and they actually don't even make this hard drive anymore to my knowledge, is it's Firewire 800, which most computers don't have that, at least Apple computers, they don't have that at all, that I'm aware of, as far as MacBook Pros go. And you'd actually have to plug this hard drive into the wall as well. So now you're constantly having to be plugged in and you're not mobile at all. So that's another problem with this drive, but I, I had this set down and someone walked by on accident and they tripped over the wire that was plugged into the wall and it destroyed this hard drive. And it was about three months of footage that I had been shooting when I first started my YouTube channel. And I, going back to it, I was like a struggling student. I didn't have the money to have a backup. So I lost everything that I had shot just like that. 
Now, the thing about hard drives that get broken, there's always a potential chance that you can send it in somewhere and they can potentially professionally fix it. Now, once that happened to me, I actually found a place in California that I sent a hard drive to and they kind of gave me an estimate as far as there's a potential we can save this hard drive, but it's going to cost you around $2,000 and there's not even a guarantee that we can rescue what has been lost. So when I had no money to begin with, I couldn't afford that. So I asked them to send it back. Sad story is somehow they lost the drive and they never found it again. So I lost all that footage regardless if I was ever able to make that money anyways to be able to pay for that service. So I wasn't stoked about that. That's another bitter moment in my career or history, but that's having a bad hard drive or kind of a freak accident with the hard drive and not having a backup. So I lost all the footage and actually my original Kauai video that I shot, all the footage that I shot from that trip, it all got lost. Thankfully I had exported it, but all the other files that I had taken, shots that I had gotten, they were all lost. So another problem that happens is you're traveling on the road, you plug in your hard drive and you're editing off of your hard drive and you have to get off the airplane because you've been editing on the airplane. So you just leave your hard drive plugged in and you shut your laptop and you put this in your bag. Now the problem with that is your hard drive is still essentially spinning for the most part unless it's in some kind of sleep mode that I'm not aware of, but it's still activated so that needle potentially can hit that hard drive or that disc as it's spinning. So I have also seen it as people are traveling just because of too much shake on the drive as they're traveling with it in their backpack, it's also ruined the drive as well. So another rule of thumb, always eject your hard drive when you're traveling as far as going from one location to the other. Never leave it actually plugged in. In this case, it's actually falling apart right now. This is actually the case that I swear by. It's called spec case. Completely different tangent, um, but it protects your case. This is about three year old case, so it's been through a lot and that's why the back part's falling apart, but I wouldn't suggest dropping your laptop, but I do love this for my laptop and it's kept it safe from harm and accidents from everywhere that I've traveled. Going back to workflow, once I have both hard drives backed up, we then go back to our office because we just moved into office, which I'll be showing you very soon. So once we have these hard drives backed up, we'll go to the office and then we'll put this footage onto our main master hard drives that we have at work. And we'll back that up in two different hard drives at work. And then from there, we can actually delete the footage that's on here and then we can work off of those two hard drives as long as we're not traveling too much. So the hard drives that we have at the office are actually the hard drives that I have right here. This is actually really heavy. This is called a Promise. Pegasus 2 R8 RAID drive, and this holds 32 terabytes of information. So that's a lot of information. Now what makes this so cool and so heavy is that there's a lot of hard drives in here. I'll literally just show you a demonstration right there. Boom, I plug it back in. You never wanna take it out while you're actually plugged in. But when I back up our footage on here, it essentially backs it up onto all these drives. Now let's just say one of these drives goes bad. Because it protects your footage on several drives, they call it redundancy, if one of those drives fails, it still has it backed up, and I can eject this drive, and these lights are normally blue, but if one of the drives goes bad, it will turn red, I'll eject that drive, put in a new drive, start the software, and it will back it up over there. So this is an awesome way to protect your footage. This is, once again, a 32 terabyte drive. This stuff comes at a very expensive price. I'll have a link below in the description. So the drives that we use are, are those ones I just showed you down there, those 32 terabyte drives. And we, for the last year and a half, we also use another drive called G Technology. That's the brand name. And they're high-end hard drives for professional work. And we actually have basically that but even bigger, it's a 64 terabyte drive, and we use that as our main drives now with those also backing up our footage. So going back, let's wrap this all up. If you're a beginner filmmaker, you don't have hardly any money to buy these big drives. And just for the record, I didn't start buying these bigger drives until like three, four years into the whole YouTube scene with my career, and that was because we were doing brand deals so we could have started affording that stuff. But if you're just starting off, 
These drives right here I think are an awesome option. You're spending around $100 for a two terabyte drive. I would get at least two of these drives and then continue from there depending on how many more drives you need. Just for the record, we own about 30 of these two terabyte drives at our office because they're all, they're constantly being sent out on projects and when we're shooting our videos because we're shooting in 6k we're going through a lot of footage so some of our projects will go through about four of these drives two terabyte drives so two four six eight not good with math so that's eight terabytes of drives Four terabytes are the main footage and the other four terabytes are backing up that footage. So we're not truly shooting eight terabytes of footage. We're shooting four terabytes roughly on most of our projects and then we're backing it up to another four terabytes. So that's kind of our workflow. Then we'll take it to my computer, transfer it to the big hard drives and then delete the footage on here or if we're still editing on the road, we'll continue to work on these drives. So I'll have links below to all these hard drives down below. And this is my experience with working with hard drives from the last six years. I feel these are all awesome hard drives. I'm still open to other hard drives out there. I'd love to know what hard drive you're using for your workflow. So leave it down below in the comments. In the next couple of weeks, we'll start releasing tutorial videos on editing, especially focus on Adobe Premiere because that's the software that we use for our team and it's actually what a lot of people, even in the Hollywood world, use as well. So we'll be talking about that very shortly. Thanks so much for watching. Any other questions you have on hard drives, leave it down below in the comments. I will have links in the description mentioning all the products that I talked about today, what I would recommend at different price ranges, and yeah, back up your footage. I cannot say that enough. Thanks so much for watching. Over and out. Yeah, wham, bam, super tramp. And I tipping up my hat while I boost the fans. And I have a rock top, can you feel the noise? All the girls scream now cause they want the boys. Yo, making all the clouds looking like a big joke. When I run so fast and I sing so low. And you never wanna mess with me, you're just texting me. I just set me free, so just stop.